As I was saying, Broncos, Bills, Bills by seven and a half here. It's Monday night football. Bills uh, down to five and four for their record. Panic now in Buffalo. Panic. We against panicking? the Broncos. They're coming off a bye, I believe. Don't fact check me on that. Don't get, just stop fact checking. But they're three and five with two straight wins. They are. Because if you're into winning streaks. Every AFC West team has won their last game or two. Per okay. the standings. Every AFC team in the East. Every AFC East team lost last year, last week. I said AFC West. The West teams all won. The East all lost. Is that trend going to continue here on Monday Night Football? <laughs> uh, so what is the, the, the other trend that we need to mention at some point? You, as Nostradamus over there, what I do. made this statement that Denver's defense on this historically terrible pace could not possibly continue at their way, rate it was. Nailed it. Is it week, which week do we give them the credit for the turnaround? Was it the it's Jets game? three weeks. No, the Jets put up 30. So it's the Chiefs, right? Since six, week six on? I mean, honestly, two of their last three games came against the Chiefs. Right. Since the Chiefs, they've, uh, they've turned, turned life around. But not just, but it's how incredibly they've turned it around is, is the thing, right? Depending on the number you look at, they were literally dead ass last before those games, and they've jumped to, like, first in some numbers. Okay, now, well, here's the deal. Here's how they, – they are still lowest EPA per play, say, against the pass. I'll get the whole number. Okay, but they are seventh, I think, overall in EPA per play since week six. So there you go. Uh, so against the pass, they're still worst, but they're eighth best in the last three weeks. That's how bad they were early on. Yeah, it's unbelievably bad. Let's check the whole defense here. Well, we up until that Chiefs game, they were by far the worst defense in the NFL in EPA per play. So they've gone from 32nd by a mile yeah. to 8th. Like double the worst, double the next worst team Right. at one point. So let's see. EPA per play. Are they that high? Where are they the last couple of weeks? The uh, they are 8th since week 6. You're right. And so where were they... Last. And then on the season, they're still last, right? Probably. That just shows how bad they were. Yeah. For that time. But I said, they can't be that bad. Like, my analysis was simply a mean regression. They can't be that bad. Correct. And even against the Chiefs in two out of those three weeks. Yeah, they're, the, they're still the worst on the season. But they, are, but they have the lowest touchdown drive allowed rate in the last three weeks. Like, best in the NFL. Yeah. Like they've gone, and that, I think that was the number. So, they had the worst touchdown drive rate through week five and now they have the best since that point yeah so it's always interesting like what what actually matters is it the trend um you know if if it if the bills had played them in week three when they gave up 70 to the dolphins it's like well they were just playing bad back then was it matchup stuff either way i think denver is going to be a lot more competitive on that side of the ball going forward than what we saw earlier in the season yeah and quite and that makes them quite a dangerous team because the offense was better than people you know, the, the last year, the whole thing was Russ is bad. The offense stinks. Everyone's fired. Sean Payton comes in to fix it. And then he kind of did. The, the offense was better. It's just that nobody cared because the defense was giving up 70 to Miami. If the defense has gotten back on track, like now we're going to start noticing that, hey, the offense is better than it used to be. Like suddenly Denver is actually quite a, a formidable team. Yeah, but even the offense has been – real inconsistent these last few weeks russ has not played great and uh and they've won their last two and the third was against kansas city where they kept them you know it was tight can yeah i mean kansas city's defense shut them down in week six um so yeah i think it's a it's a good game because uh, seven and a half is a huge number man because uh, the buffalo is a team that used to cover that pretty easily and now they're now they're not man now they're not they're playing down to the giants they're losing to the patriots um i think I think Buffalo definitely showing some weakness. Uh, Buffalo splits are also really interesting pre and post Matt Milano. Losing Matt Milano in the middle of that defense. Um, when we talk about uh, force multiplier effects and everything, sometimes, like, is that, is that one of the big is, – is that the, the biggest deal for Buffalo? Losing an elite linebacker like Milano. Losing Tredavious White earlier in the season. Are they just getting so beat up? on that side of the ball. And then I want to highlight Von Miller again, Von Miller revenge game here. But Von Miller doing absolutely nothing coming off of injury. Now, did he just come back too soon? Is this what he's going to be? 
Is he just playoff Von Miller because he's had two of the best playoff stretches you've ever seen for defensive players, 2015 and 2021, uh, on Super Bowl runs? Uh, that's a huge question mark for me for Buffalo. Yeah, the linebacker thing I think is significant. I mean, they had already lost Tremaine Edmonds. They lose Matt Milano. They've been getting injured at that spot repeatedly. There's other guys going down in the secondary as well. I mean, the defense has really taken a battering in terms of injuries at key positions, and you would expect it to have an impact, right? Like the we act sometimes like injuries are just they are part of the game they are relevant things to a certain extent you kind of have to just factor it in and roll on but it makes a difference like it's going to change the way the unit is able to perform overall i think that's a big part of that defense not looking the way it's supposed to look just to back that up further and uh it's more getting into some off-season discussion here but i've been doing some research we've we've rejigged our um war metric a little bit so redone some past seasons, you know, altered the algorithm a little bit, we'll say. Um, and one of the findings that I had here was the difference between elite players and, say, average to below average players at a given dis, uh, position. Call it the standard deviation, basically. How important are elite players at certain positions versus others? And the most important positions to have elite players, rather than average or below average players, are receiver, edge, and then it was linebacker was third and it, it, that was another one that I, I, f I feel like that was true through the years but we talk about linebacker as a low value position but it felt true when Luke Keekley was around in right. Carolina it feels true with Bobby Wagner like it feels true and Matt Milano is an elite linebacker and I do think Buffalo is feeling that and maybe it's because they affect the run game they affect what you do in coverage um, especially in a zone heavy NFL so again when we look at Buffalo's problems I think Ben Solak was highlighting it this week. Like Buffalo's underlying metrics are still great, but they're not winning games. And usually the underlying metrics are going to win out. So like don't write off the bills. Um, but it does feel like they're finding their way defensively without Milano. They're finding their way offensively with some injuries and Dalton Kincaid taking more of the workload. I think they'll get there. Um, but yeah, it's interesting what's happening on defense for Buffalo. It's also specifically – the loss, the drop-off, I think, is in coverage. Like, Matt Milano is one of the best coverage linebackers right. in the NFL. Um, Terrell, or, yeah, Tremaine Edmonds, um, for as much, like, when he was, I think, the best graded linebacker in the NFL last year in coverage, and right. even before he was grading well, he had the range and the athleticism and the insane physical tools. They gave, they gave him difficult coverage assignments. It's a double whammy. You're yeah, losing. so you're losing yeah. all of that, and you're replacing them with guys who are grading – their, their struggling area is all in coverage, right? All, whether, whichever linebacker you're looking at for Buffalo, the weakness of their game this season is coverage. So in addition to those guys keep being given slightly less insane asks anyway, so everything's made, been made a lot worse in that area, which has a knock-on effect for the guys behind them. Like you, right. you, those guys have to do more now. They have to cover a, a broader range of ground. It's definitely going to affect things. All right, man. Lots of breakdown in this game. I think it'll be a fun Monday night football game. I know it's seven and a half, and it feels like the Bills should be way better than the Broncos, but Broncos are trending in the right direction. Bills are a little shaky recently. Seven and a half, where are you going here? Uh, I am going to go Denver to cover that. Interesting. I don't want to agree with you on this one, so I'll go Buffalo. I keep picking them to cover big spreads when they come up, so we'll stick with that.